When we talk about a collection of items or objects, which we now know mathematically to be a set, we often consider them by grouping them in different ways. Rather than just looking at the group as a whole, we can break it up into smaller pieces to help us organize, understand, and classify the objects. And this is something we do all the time pretty naturally without even thinking about it. For instance, if we consider the set of all NFL players, we likely don't root for all of them, rather cheering on just one specific team, a smaller group pared down from the larger whole. When you go to school, you likely don't sit in a room where your teacher presents to the entire student body all at once, but rather a smaller class, perhaps a group of 15 to 30 people. And of course, when you buy a package of Starbursts, you likely pick out all the yellow ones and only eat those because we all know that yellow is the superior flavor, don't even at me. <clears throat> Anyways, this concept of selecting smaller groups from a larger set is one that we'll use a lot in mathematics as well. Specifically here, we'll call those smaller groups a subset. We say A is a subset of set B, written A is a subset of B, if every element of A also belongs to B. For example, the set Monday, Wednesday, Friday is a subset of the set of weekdays because each element Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, are all weekdays. They all belong to that larger set. We can say that Tom Brady, Drew Brees, and Cam Newton form a subset of NFL quarterbacks. And we can also say that Bulbasaur, Charmander, and Squirtle form a subset of Pokemon, and so on and so forth. You may have seen numerical implications of this in other math courses at some point as well when discussing different sets of numbers. Specifically, we can observe that the natural numbers, those are counting numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on, are a subset of integers, as every natural number is also an integer. However, we could not say that integers are a subset of natural numbers, denoting this with a slash through, because integers include negatives and zero, where naturals do not. So there are elements of the set of integers that don't belong to the naturals, thus failing to satisfy the definition of a subset. We would be able to continue this though by stating integers are a subset of the rational numbers. Rationals, remember, are essentially any number that can be represented as a fraction. Since we can write every integer over one, they can all be represented as fractions and so all belong to the set of rationals as well, thus making them a subset. Before we go further, let's take a moment to clarify some notational similarities. In episode 2, we introduced this symbol. And while this looks somewhat similar to our subset notation, and also functions somewhat similarly, at least in the sense that they both represent contained in, they are different and we need to be deliberate and careful in how we use them. This symbol is specific to elements and represents when an element belongs to a set. We could say 2 belongs to the set 2468, for instance. This symbol, on the other hand, is specific to subsets and represents when a set is a subset of another set. So we could say the set 2 is a subset of the set 2468. Notice how I'm specifying an element without brackets versus a set with brackets. This is important as we could not write 2 is a subset of 2468 or the set 2 belongs to 2468. This is for elements and this is for subsets. One thing we can do though is make an analogy for this symbol to a less than or equal to sign. That is because with this line underneath, you can think of this as representing a subset or equal to. In other words, when we use this sign, we can state for instance that the set 2468 is a subset of the set 2468. It is a subset of itself in the same way that we can state 5 is less than or equal to 5. Likewise, if we don't want to include the set itself in our discussion, we have a way to specify this similar to stating something like strictly less than. While 5 is less than or equal to 5, it is not strictly less than 5. This phrase limits us to numbers like 0, negative 3, and 4.999, each of which are strictly less than. In terms of sets, we describe this restriction as a proper subset. Set A is a proper subset of set B, written A proper subset of B, if A is a subset of B and A does not equal B. So the set 2468 is a subset of the set 2468, but it is not a proper subset. 
The set 246, on the other hand, can be described in both ways, as a subset of the set 2468, more generally, or as a proper subset, more specifically. One last thing to consider here is the case of the empty set. Since the empty set has no elements by definition, it sort of automatically fulfills the criteria that all of its elements belong to any other set. This is a little weird to think about at first, but its consequence is that the empty set is a subset of every set. This will be important to remember in our next video as we aim to determine how many different subsets we can break a set into, but for now, let's just remember that the empty set is a subset of every set. All right, I think that's where we'll leave it for now. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you do have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, have a great rest of your day.